Hello, pup parents, and welcome to today's episode of the Perfect Pup Podcast. My name is Devin. I'm excited for today's episode. It's finally turning into summer, and especially a summer after COVID and lockdowns and restrictions and a lot of things, and life is somewhat getting back to normal. I'm very, very excited for this summer, and I'm excited for this topic. I'm going to talk to you about five tips you can use if you want to go hiking with your dog. So let's get right to it. First off, it's a little dark, which is kind of ironic. I, you know, I'm feel, I'm, we're doing a podcast about being outdoors. Those of you watching on video, it's dark. It's rainy today, but so is life. Uh, in this in this episode, we're going to talk about five things, five tips for when you go on hikes with your dogs. And honestly, these can go for any type of adventure that you might be having, whether it be hiking or just you know maybe going on a leisurely walk around a nice lake or um, taking your dog out with you in the city, whatever it might be, these tips are all kind of generally um, applicable. So let's get right to it. Number one is do your research. There is nothing worse than showing up to hike or somewhere you want to go and dogs are completely not allowed. So it's super important that you do your research beforehand. And in today's day and age, most of the time, you know, you can find if a hike is, is dog friendly, you can use things like all trails as an app. Um, You can search on Google, you can, you know, maybe go on different forums for that, for your local area, whatever it might be. Most of them will pretty explicitly let you know if there are dogs allowed. And part of that, of course, is understanding the leash laws um, that accompany that specific hike or that specific adventure that you're doing. So number one, do your research. Don't show up and be disappointed that your dog can't be there. So do your research beforehand. Number two is tags. Make sure that your dog has tags. And that's like a minimum that your dog has like their tags around their collar. Um, More importantly, I would say is make sure that they're microchipped because, you know, if your dog really were to take off and you're out in kind of an open area or on a hike and they don't come back for a while, they might lose their collar, they might lose the tags, you know, a whole host of things. And that's why getting your dog microchipped is super important. Um, and in most places, it's relatively inexpensive um, and is a procedure that can be done typically at your vet. Um, they kind of register their their microchip, and then if they ever get lost and end up at a shelter, they can scan the microchip and get your information to reunite you with your dog. So that's tip number two is make sure that your dog has proper identification and hopefully a microchip. Tip number three is going to be cleaning up after yourself. I live in New York City and nothing drives me more crazy than people who just let their dogs poop anywhere and everywhere and don't pick up because it gives every other pup parent out there a bad look. And it makes people who don't have dogs not like dogs or people who maybe are on the fence about dogs in certain areas, you know, specifically with hiking. You know, a lot of these are really um, areas that have been preserved and and it's nature and it's where people go to, to get away from um, a lot of their problems, whatever it might be. And, and if you stumble upon dog poop on the trail, it's super, super frustrating, at least for me personally. I really do think that there are kind of two types of people in the world, people who pick up their dog's poop and everyone else. So I am encouraging you very, very strongly to be the type of person that picks up your dog's poop, whatever you take in with you, bring it back out. And honestly, I think it's so important as us dog parents to do this because if you don't, more and more places are going to say no dogs allowed and that nobody wants that. So pick up after your dog. That's tip number three. Uh, That's more of a, you should just do it. It's not even a tip. Just, just do it. Just pick up after your dog. Tip number four is to make sure you bring plenty of water and treats. So a lot of this will depend on your dog's age. It'll depend on, you know, their capabilities with hiking. You know, my Labrador retrievers, I can go pretty far. Obviously, they still need water, but I can go pretty far. And, and you know, we'll take a break every 20, 30 minutes. Whereas with my Puggle, he's older. He's 15 years old. He's still pretty agile, but he needs more water. He needs more breaks. So, and on those breaks as well, make sure you have some treats. You know, I, I love bringing the pup for treats, even the jerkies. I think the jerkies have a little bit more kind of just sustenance to them for my dogs when I'm out on a hike. Um, and they love it. They love when we stop, you know, they can get 
get a nice reward, get some water and, and get back on the trail. And that honestly leads me perfectly into number five, which would be training beforehand. So this is the most important tip for going out on hikes with your dogs or going out on adventures is to make sure that you train for this scenario beforehand. Let me tell you this. If you if your dog has an okay recall, you're not super confident in it, but generally speaking, your dog will come back to you, right? If you go out on a hike, even if it's dog friendly in the sense that you can have your dog off leash, if you go out and your dog is enamored with everything that's happening around them, they've got smells, they've got probably other animals, there might be other people on the trail, other dogs, you know, there's a whole host of things that'll be happening on these adventures. And if you call them back to you and they don't come back, then what? what what's your plan B? So I, I paint that picture to kind of drive home the point of you need to train beforehand. If you want your dog to have a perfect recall around distractions, even other animals like rabbits or deer or whatever it might be, you need to practice that beforehand in kind of a more controlled environment, you know, being start off with the more basic stuff in your yard, in your home, in a, in a park that doesn't have animals, et cetera, you know, working up the distance on a 30 foot long lead, working up with distraction, working, working up with, um, duration, all that good stuff. And then even when you're going out on these hikes in the beginning, even if they're dog friendly and off leash is allowed, you should probably start with your dog on a long lead and start by doing some practice recall, calling your dog back to giving them some rewards because at the end of the day, when you're out on these adventures and you're out on these hikes, their surroundings are going to be often much more interesting and much more appealing than you are to your dog. So practice beforehand, train beforehand. The time to train recall around distractions is not when there are distractions that are very difficult for your dog. You do that before you get into those real world, world situations. Or if you're going to do it in a real world situation, you do it in a sense, you do it in a way that your dog can't get away. I love using 30 foot leads when I go on hikes, you know, because then if it is, if the dogs, my dogs do need to be leashed, um, I can hold the 30 foot lead and they can still have room to kind of maneuver and explore. Uh, but if it's off leash, I can, I can let the lead drag and they can, you know, make their way wherever they want to. And I still have a little bit more control. It's a lot easier to to get a hold of something that's 30 feet long than just six feet, meaning a leash or even just your dog, which is, you know, a couple feet long or two feet long, whatever, however long they are. But again, train beforehand, always, always, always train beforehand. So again, real quick recap of the five tips for hiking slash going on adventures with your dog. Number one, do your research beforehand and obey the laws of, of that area where you're going. Number two, Make sure your dog is tagged and hopefully microchipped. Number three, clean up after yourself. Just do it. Number four, bring plenty of water and treats. I like to bring our Pupford collapsible dog bowl. Um, it collapses really thin and then pops up and you can get like a cup and a half of water. Um, and then number five is train the situations beforehand. If you use these tips, you will have a much happier, much more successful adventure, much better hike, much less stress for you and a much more enjoyable experience for your dog. That is all we want, right? That is that is what we're all looking for. So thank you so much for listening to this episode. One quick thing, if you are looking to go on some adventures with your dog right now, um, so if you're listening to this later on, basically if you're listening now, the first week of May in 2021 to this episode, we have some Adventure Pups deals going on right now, up to 25% off things like long leads, collapsible bowls, treats, jerkies, poop bags, um, harnesses, leashes, all the works, everything you need for your adventure, go check it out. There'll be a link in the description of this episode. Um, but again, for those of you who've left reviews, I truly appreciate it. And I encourage more of you to leave reviews and leave feedback so that I can improve these episodes. Thank you so much for listening. I truly appreciate it. And we will catch you on the next episode.